I'll have to say that the success of my demonstrations are usually directly proportional to how much danger I might be able to do to my body during the course of that experiment. That always gets my students' interest up. And so things with flames are very popular. I think it's very uh, common that teachers do a flame test with their students. When we're looking at metal ions, we want to look for that uh, illustration of where atoms can be excited from the ground state up into the excited state by adding heat. And those electrons now in the excited state, higher energy levels, are not going to be very happy there. And when they drop back down to the ground state, they're going to emit a very characteristic color. You can think of these colors as being the fingerprints for the metal cations that we're examining. And they're actually used like a fingerprint to identify that substance. So, what I have here is a different take on flame tests. I'm going to show you two. Uh, there's lots of ways that I do this in my classroom. Usually as a laboratory, I'm going to be soaking wood splints and letting my students investigate what the characteristic colors are in a flame test. But for demonstration purposes, I want to try something that's a little different and as safe as possible. So, the first experiment that I'm going to show you here involves carbonates. Now, what I have is three different carbonates to show you. Potassium carbonate, copper carbonate, and lithium carbonate. Those are my three choices. And you're thinking, what's she going to do with a carbonate that's going to give her a flame test? Well, I've got a great little bottle of vinegar here. And I know that when I react vinegar, this weak acid, with a carbonate, I'm going to produce carbon dioxide gas. Again, you may be thinking, so? Where's the flame test going to be come from, coming from? And I think what happens is that with the uh, powders here in the Petri dishes, the rising carbon dioxide is going to lift some of these particles up so that the electrons can be more exposed to the heat from a Bunsen burner flame. And that's going to excite the electrons, producing a really good flame test. I've added quite a bit of the carbonates here. I'm just going to put the copper carbonate into the middle Petri dish now so that all three are ready. And we're going to do these all together. So I'm going to move the bottles over and light the Bunsen burner. Okay, and we can take the lights down now. The first flame test that you're going to see will be the potassium carbonate. And I want you to think, what color are you expecting to see for those of you who have done the flame test before? All I'm going to do, pouring on the vinegar, And hopefully what you can see is the lavender, the pale lavender color. The reason I like this flame test, there's no alcohol involved. Vinegar and a carbonate. We're producing a gas. Adding a little bit more vinegar. There's an even better example of that lavender color that you would expect to see with the flame test for a potassium ion. In the second dish we have our copper, copper carbonate with the vinegar. I'm not getting as much bubbling here, but you can see a touch of the green flame color that you would expect in a copper flame test. And last, this is the lithium, lithium carbonate. And remember that I'm using all carbonates. This helps the students realize that it's not the negative portion of the molecule that's creating the flame test. It's the metals. The metals which have one or two loosely held valence electrons that can easily be excited. Here's the lithium. And that's a really nice red. Very obvious.